Hello everyone. So many times we all have this confusion that what are the career options available in case you pursue any of the science streams, let's say physics, chemistry, maths, biology, right? So in this video, I'm going to tell you a lot of career options that are available in physics. So if you dream of becoming a physicist in your life or you're in the process of becoming one, then this video is for you. So here we're going to talk about what can uh, the career choices you have and how much money you can make being a physicist, right? So because after all, uh, money is important, right? So my name is Swami Prakash, alumnus of Nizer Bhubaneshwar. And in this video, we're going to talk about career options in physics. By the way, um, one of the best way to become a physicist is to pursue integrated BSMS courses in physics at all the ISERs, NISER, ISC Bangalore and the other research institutes of India. So in case you don't know, uh, IAT and NEST are the entrance examinations you should be appearing for and IAT is on May 25th and NEST is on June 22nd and the forms are already available. So hurry up and fill the forms. Now let's tune uh, to the content of, of our video and let's see uh, a very obvious thing when you are a physicist or let's say you are pursuing a PhD or your MSc in physics is to stay in academia and progress further, right? So what I mean that academic research is the majority of the choices that people make or they have, right? Uh, which means suppose you are a BSc student, you can pursue MSc or if you uh, are pursuing MSc then you can go for a PhD right so uh, that's that's a broader thing in itself but yeah that's what it is um, so we are, we are going to talk more about the stipend the salaries and uh, other perks right in the upcoming slides so uh, that is one and um, the other thing that many people probably are not very comfortable with or you know they don't have a lot of doors uh, open for themselves is the industrial research but that is very very much possible um, even if you're from physics right so for example let me give you um, some instances for example um, I have pursued my MSc in um, you know uh, numerical uh, basically quantum physics but I have done a lot of numerical simulations uh, a lot of coding and I know you know a lot of tools that I can use and uh, which are also used in uh, the industrial research right in many of the IT companies like IBM, Microsoft, Google, PCS etc. So I can probably apply with my you know current profile to those companies for a job as well right because what I have done here in my MSc research or let's say people do it there in, uh, in their PhD research can be put to use in um, the work going on in those companies as well and of course they're going to pay you uh, well you know uh, quite more than what you get uh, as stipend in your MSc and PhD courses okay so these are the two things and other than that many people also switch to teaching so let's say they, they become school teachers college teachers lecturers right um, um, uh, yeah so that is a thing many of them also switch to uh, a lot of coaching institutes right in private institutions for teaching uh, science communication is coming up it's uh, gaining popularity nowadays right so for example you might see a lot of journals um, articles magazines you know getting published that um, communicate a lot of uh, scientific advancements that are happening in the field to uh, the general public right so for example nature is one such um, um, journal right and a lot of them so you also have this opportunity to sometimes become an editor or let's say um, content producer or something like that reviewer of course reviewer uh, needs a lot of experience and you know uh, research backing but yeah so you you can still be an editor or you know science communicator there are descriptions for that um, there are counselors who work in with these companies like uh, you know to, to promote science to basically um, uh, career counsel a lot of students right so that is uh, also an option and of course like startup economy is also you know uh, gaining a lot of traction these days for example um, let's say you have done your uh, work in applied physics right so you have a lot of knowledge in 
uh, propulsion, jet propulsion, and uh, you know thrust engines and so on and so forth. So you might end up. Uh, you know, uh, making something that can be put to use in the society and, um, you know, um, uh, in the bigger picture, you might start uh, a startup or, or a company of your own, right? Uh, providing services and um, the products that you have made with uh, the knowledge of physics that you have done, right? So uh, these are some of the options. Now let's see more. So if we uh, talk about Academia, uh, it's of course a Sisyphean task. Um, so, for example, even if you have done your MSc in physics, you still have to qualify certain exams to become a PhD student in India, right? So, the exams are the following, like CSI and NET, GATE is also there, and the stipends are these, like 37,000 for first two years, and this is Junior Research Fellowship, and 42,000, it gets promoted, upgraded to 42,000, um, Senior Research Fellowship, plus some of the perks like accommodation and um, some contingency grants on a yearly basis and so on and so forth. If you choose to pursue your PhD outside India, right? So there are different criteria for different regions. For example, US, Europe, and um, uh, is what we categorize them into. So for USA, there is again uh, like you have to satisfy English uh, requirement and um, some other things like GRE is optional, but TOEFL or IELTS is mostly mandatory for most of the places in the US, and it typically takes five to six to seven years depending on what field are you working in. Right. In Europe, the picture is quite different, uh, as in you don't have uh, to satisfy English requirements because you have to have a lot of interviews uh, while while applying for a PhD program. For example, I had um, more than, you know, uh, three to four rounds of interviews uh, from the places I got a PhD offer. Uh, so that is the difference and of course if I talk about stipend in US uh, they are you know pretty um, good uh, and varies from around um, $2,000 per month to uh, $4,000 per month on the upper edge right uh, so that's quite good amount of money and of course it depends from place to place and similarly in Europe um, the stipend is slightly more than most of the places in the US and um, it's again like varies from 1500 euros to somewhere around 3000 3, euros for example the position that I was offered um, one of it one of the three positions so were um, was offering me around 1500 euros per month and no taxes involved in Europe you also have certain taxes pension cuts and a couple of other things like transportation allow these things so the total enhanced stipend is quite less um, than what you're offered right so uh, in the 1500 euros that I was offered there was no deduction of taxes or anything else it, it, it was it was the full amount that I uh, would have got in my hands. Uh, from Germany, uh, I was offered around 2,500 euros per month, but there was a deduction of taxes and a couple of other things. So um, the gross amount would have been around 21, 2,200 euros, right? So that is the difference. Um, now, after PhD, what you need to do is postdoc, right? So yes, postdoctoral positions and stipend in India stays around 50,000 to 70,000 rupees per month. And um, internationally, which means in US, uh, in US it uh, it starts from around fifty thousand dollars per year, to and goes up to seventy thousand dollars per year. Right? And in Europe, the case is also similar. It starts from around I think um, forty-five thousand euros and goes up to little fifty, fifty-five, sixty thousand euros on the upper end. Um, yeah. Uh, and when you are done with your PhD or postdoctoral positions. Now you have gained, you know, quite uh, some experience in research, like in whatever field you're working. Let's see physics we're talking about, right? Okay. So uh, after that, you also have this. Um, now you become eligible to apply for a faculty position, right? Um, I mean, you become technically eligible after the PhD itself, but it takes some, you know, independent research experience of two to three years, like uh, through this postdoctoral uh, positions or degrees. Um, that you become like you can technically apply and get selected and become a professor um, at any research university or a lab and lead a research group of your own like how fascinating is that true so 
like after like it's mentioned five to seven years of postdocs is uh, is what is needed uh, to become a professor in India, right? In in very good colleges like Iser, Snizer, Science Bangalore, um, IITs, NITs, right? Um, so they uh, in most cases demand uh, some postdoctoral experience, right? In your profile, and let's say uh, uh, after ten years of uh, being an entry level professor right or an assistant professor you become associate and of course your salary increases with uh, in this range and after again like uh, having a lot of experience and spending some uh, some more years right in the field you become full professor and um, uh, this is what your salary looks like of course it varies depending on experience and a couple of other things and if you become a professor outside India, let's say in US, Europe, then your salary will typically look like this, like $100,000 to $200,000 per year um, in any of the universities or research lab where you are employed, right? So yeah, this is the, like this thing, academia. And now let's switch to industry. So what are the options you're having? Let's say you're an astrophysicist or um, a theoretical physicist, right? So what can you contribute to the government organizations, right? That is also something we need to discuss. Um, so for example, government also have a lot of um, labs of their own, right? So like one very popular is uh, Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. Another is let's say ISRO, right? So uh, we also have INST, we also have um, uh, a lot of CSIR labs, right? Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. They have a variety of labs across all over India. And um, so you can, after a PhD, during a PhD, you can apply for a research scientist position. You can apply for a junior research fellowship after your MSc and um, uh, become a senior researcher. This is equivalent to a PhD program. And of course, these are uh, temporary positions and uh, depending on your position you can earn anywhere between 70,000 to 2 lakh rupees per month so this is when you're a research scientist or a group leader working at any CSIR lab or a, you know a research scientist senior scientist at DRDO right um, so these are some of the institutions that you can contribute towards the government and now let's also see Yes, so if you switch to private sector or the private industry, for example, you have a lot of opportunities, like I mentioned about um, coding, simulations, right, data, and uh, basically something that can be applied to IT industry, right, in the current scenario. So for example, you have done your work related to machine learning. You have used a lot of uh, machine learning tools or data science tools, right, or you have done a lot of numerics. For example, I did a lot of numerical analysis. So these are very marketable skill play. Uh, marketable means that you can use these uh, tools or you know um, uh, these skills to basically produce something good for those companies as well and of course they will hire you with good pay okay so PhD in most cases is not necessary right although it's preferred um, an entry-level salary this is for I think US like uh, it gets you more than $80,000 $80, per year and um, when you get promoted and after spending some experience you know spending some time and having some experience um, you can even get more than $200,000 per year in the US in India also like you become you can become a data scientist or a machine learning specialist or an IT engineer and your pay will stay around more than 10 lakhs I mean it, it will start from 8 to 10 lakhs and go up to um, you know 30 40 50 lakhs depending on your experience and uh, you know uh, yeah the time you spend there so yeah, that is the thing. Uh, yeah, Nvidia, Microsoft, Deloitte, Goldman Sachs. So these are some of the companies that actively hire, you know, uh, people from physics background as well. So uh, the list is not uh, exhaustive. It uh, has a lot of companies, for example, TCS, Google, IBM, right, um, American Express and so on and so forth. Yeah, so uh, this is about the private sector. Now let's see what we have got. I think, yeah, that is it. Uh, so you can typically become a professor, um, you know, uh, 10 years down the line, if you're pursuing a BSc in academia, right? Uh, if you, if you want to pro, uh, proceed towards academia, if you want to transition after your MSc, these, this is definitely possible. You can switch to government sector, 
um, industries or private sector industries, right? And of course, you are always welcome to build something of your own with your knowledge and skills and contribute to the society through your startup and companies, right? Um, but if you like this video, you might want to check out SciAstra, so India's first and largest science and research community, right? And um, we have mentored more than 20,000 students and we have more than 2,000 success stories, right? And I can't wait to see you get into your dream research institute, right? Um, and for that, we are also running some very nice crash courses for IAT and NES that I talked about in the start of this video. And if you're interested more, um, you can check out Syastra app and uh, contact us. Okay, so till then, um, keep talking. See you in the next video. Bye bye.